Hi there, this is Alyssa from Unbusy, taking the overwhelm out of introverted mom life. And today we have a bonus episode for you all about holistic health for moms. We're bringing on a guest, Lucy Hutchings, to talk about wellness. Lucy is a registered dietitian on a mission to empower busy moms to take control of their health so they can live their best life. She believes in a holistic approach to health and wellness, and she believes every person is unique and that there is no one size diet fits all. She's also a homeschooling mama of three, host of the Healthy Mama podcast, and is the owner of Wellness from Within Nutrition, LLC, where she provides nutrition counseling to anyone ready to start their health journey and reach their health goals. So hi, Lucy. Welcome to the show. Hi, Alyssa. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I love your mission of empowering mamas to reach true wellness from the inside out. I think we all need that. And I agree, we all have a right to eat real food. No more of this ultra processed stuff, right? Exactly. Also, your belief that health has to be holistic is a huge step in the right direction compared to today's doctors. And I want to hear more about that because you're so right that health encompasses way more than just the food we put into our bodies. So I'd like for you to talk about how you realize the need for holistic health. That seems unusual coming from a dietitian with a hospital practice background. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, Alyssa. Yeah, that's a really good question because you're right. I actually spent about 13 years, a little over 13 years as a clinical inpatient dietitian. And so I was working with the patients that would come in and were admitted into the hospital. So what I was seeing was a lot of that Western med type of a mentality where if you have some kind of ailment, you have a symptom, you have some kind of problem, you come in and you get um, your diagnosis and then you get some kind of a usually a medication for your treatment. But a lot of times it's something like, um, you know, elevated cholesterol or heart disease or diabetes. And when you're on these medications, if you go off the medication, you still have that problem because the root of the problem was never found. It was really just a treatment of symptoms. And that, you know, after so many years of, of working at the hospital and feeling like, there just need, there just must be a better way. I just didn't feel like people were getting what they needed. And my hands were kind of tied working in a hospital. You actually have to really be careful um, to follow the hospital's guidelines as a dietitian. And so I am really excited and happy to be um, starting my own private practice where I can actually work with people and figure out what is the root cause of these symptoms and these problems. Cause there is an answer. It might be hard to find, but there is something going on because these are often messages from your body. So being able to do that and work with people one-on-one -on -one and um, have actual follow-up with people too. That is another downside to being a dietitian in a hospital is that you, you go in, you see the patient for maybe five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes on a good day. And then you never find out what questions they had, what successes they had, or what barriers they ran into. So I am so happy to be in a position where now I can have my own one-on-one -on -one counseling, my own private practice, where I can actually make a difference in people's lives. That's great. So I'm curious about when you talk about hormone and inflammation stuff on your site, that's not an area I've researched much. So could you tell us a little bit about what you've discovered regarding the food and the body and inflammation management? Yeah, I really love talking about inflammation, actually, because it's just such a, a hot topic right now. And you may have heard it in the news, your listeners may have heard it um, in the media, a lot of this talk about inflammation, it's like a buzzword right now. And the thing is with inflammation is that it's actually a very normal process in your body. It's when, when you get a cut and you have, um, you know, redness and, you know, it gets hot and swelling. Well, that's your body's natural way of healing. And so what's happening is this is going on inside of our bodies. Um, so the reason that this is happening is because there's damage going on and it can be from the diet that we're eating. It can be from um, our lifestyle. So stress is something that can cause inflammation, but it is a normal process that I don't want people to think is something that means your body is broken. It, your body's not broken. It is actually just giving you a message that, that something is wrong and needs to change. So um, the thing is, 
is that when we have this inflammation, we don't we don't always know. It might appear as something like um, difficult difficulty in losing weight. Okay, that can be from inflammation. It could be um, hormone imbalances. It could be from it could be a, a skin issues can be a sign of it. Um, you could have digestive problems. There's so many different things that could present itself as a sign of inflammation. And so it is hard to figure out, you know, there are some blood tests, but usually what people are finding is just when they clean up their diet a little bit, it doesn't even have to be an overhaul of the diet. I'm not even suggesting that people need to go on an anti-inflammatory diet, although that does exist. And for some people that is necessary, but if you're just having some symptoms and you're curious that maybe there is some inflammation going on, then there are a few things that you can do to just clean up your diet a little bit because the, the thing that in your diet that is causing the inflammation is usually a lot of processed foods. So processed, highly refined grains, um, the processed inflammatory fats, and a lot of sugar. And that right there kind of describes the standard American diet so when you start to just become aware of some of the things that you're eating, sometimes it's actually pretty easy to just steer away from those products and then include a lot of vegetables and fruits and, and like real foods, whole foods, as much as you can. So I'm a busy mom and I know your audiences are busy moms. So I really try and make things sustainable and realistic when I'm giving advice or when I'm working with a client or the content that I put out. Um, so yeah, I think that if we're just taking the time to pay attention to what we're, we're eating and what we're allowing our children to eat too, because you really wanna establish good habits at a young age. And so just basically eating real foods, lots of vegetables and cutting back on the sugar right there is going to help a lot as far as inflammation goes. That leads perfectly into my next question, which is how should we be feeding our families? Like what are some of the most common problems you've seen and how should we as moms approach the healthy family meals thing? Even if it's something totally opposite, like de-stressing the Pinterest balanced meal thing entirely. Yeah, we do get caught up quite a bit on feeling like if we can't serve our family a perfectly balanced, beautiful, whole foods from scratch meal, then we feel like, well, then we shouldn't even bother. And that is um, totally not true. There are definitely ways to still have a healthy meal and maybe it's not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to, um, you know, be in the kitchen all day long. And, and that's definitely what I want to avoid with my, um, with the content that I put out. I don't want people to feel like they have to be spending all day in the kitchen cooking and then cleaning. And it, it's easy to, to do. It's like so easy for that to happen because, you know, we've got three meals and we've got lots of mouths to feed and cooking can be very time consuming, but I don't think that it has to be. So I, I do have some tips for your listeners as far as feeding their families uh, real healthy foods in a realistic way. And like I said before, we do want to be concentrating on um, decreasing that processed food. So just eating real foods, lots of vegetables, and um, less sugar. So the first tip I have for them is start meal planning. And I know that's something that you have stressed before, and I'm going to reiterate the meal planning. It's so important. And sometimes when you suggest to people to meal plan, they might want to turn and run the other way because it can be very um, daunting. It can be overwhelming when they think, oh, I have to plan three meals a day for seven days in a row. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just having an idea of what you're going to plan for dinner. And it doesn't have to be a meal plan for every single day. Even if you just start with three days a week and you know what you're going to have for those three days, well, that's a step in the right direction. Those are three days that you avoided the takeout or you avoided some kind of processed meal that you might've made in, instead. 
And also when you're doing your meal planning, I'm not suggesting that you have to come up with Pinterest worthy meals or come up with new recipes. I would suggest just grabbing a piece of paper and jotting down all the meals you already make on a regular basis. You don't have to go look through cookbooks and find new meals. Once you come up with that list, I call that your master meals list. Then you just look at your week, notice what your schedule is. If you're going to be out at some extracurricular activities in the evening, then obviously you need to adjust your meal plan and then slide those meals that you already make into those, into the days, just so that you have an idea of what you're going to make. I feel like that is so important because as busy moms, we can get really overwhelmed with that decision process and it really helps to decrease the fatigue. And remember that stress is actually one of those things that can lead to inflammation. So we don't want to have a lot of stress in our lives. The next thing is to rethink lunches. Lunch is an area that tends to be higher in the processed um, grains because we do a lot of sandwiches and we do a lot of snacky type things that, you know, they're, they're marketed towards children, all these little packaged items that are great for throwing into a lunch. But when you stop and read the ingredients, you're going to find mostly refined processed grains and sugar and not a lot of good nutrients. And they'll try and trick you. They'll put messages on the front of that package that say like, you know, whole grains or um, a good source of vitamin C, or they'll put, you know, mom approved or all natural things that will grab the mom's attention so that they'll buy and feel comfortable buying. But those are really just marketing tricks. And really, if you look at the ingredient list, that's what you'll that's what will give you the real information. So we don't want to be loading the lunches with a lot of processed grains and sugar. So I always recommend to try, at least just give it a try, a bento box style lunch. And you can get these containers that have individual sections in them in your, um, that section of the grocery store that sells those plastic containers. And there's all different levels. You can order online stainless steel and everything else, but you can just start with one of those little containers to see if it works for you. And then load that with things that your kids like and that, that are more healthy. So the reason why people or kids love the Lunchables so much is because it's a hands-on type of a experience. They get to make the little crackers and cheese sandwiches. They get to make the little pizza. Well, you can do something like that. You can replicate that just using healthier ingredients. So you could do um, crackers and cheese, but I recommend Simple Mills brand of crackers where it's made with almond meal instead of a processed grain. You can still put the cheese in there. You can do ham and cheese roll-ups. So skip the, the refined processed breads and use just, just take the ham and roll the cheese in it. And kids love that because it's like just a, a finger food. Um, and then you can put uh, veggie sticks, some kids like to have a dip in there. I like to put um, some kind of a healthy fat. So maybe that's a little dish of olives. And usually for my little dishes, I will put, um, I will use those uh, silicone muffin cups. And so I can put one of those with some olives in it, whatever your kids like, but just try and notice, you know, if there's an ingredient list on it, then you want to just make sure that it's not something that's loaded with things that you don't really feel comfortable with. And usually I just suggest if it's ingredients that you have a hard time reading or understanding, then it's probably a processed food that you don't want in your um, kids' diets or your own diet. And then the last tip that I have for you is, is more about breakfast and that is the cereal. So I have a really big issue with the marketing of cereal towards children. And it's just a natural part of our, our current modern culture to have cereal for breakfast. But I want to challenge everyone listening to this to read the ingredient list on that cereal. And what you're going to find is sugar and highly refined processed grains. It, take Fruit Loops, for instance. Its first ingredient is actually sugar. So I just, I'm not saying that everybody has to just completely ditch the cereal um, and get it out of their kitchen entirely, but when you are serving that cereal, 
just be aware of what it really is. You may decide that maybe cereal is more of a dessert type food rather than a breakfast food. And of course, you know, we do want to serve our kids something really healthy when they're going off to school and they need energy and they're going to be using their brains and cereal just really doesn't cut it. So you could do eggs. Um, I know they've gotten a bad rap over the years, but eggs are actually really healthy and a great thing. They can actually be really convenient if you do hard boiled eggs at the beginning of the week and you're, you know, just using them throughout the week. Um, and just, you know, even oatmeal is much less processed than the cereal, the boxes of cereals that you get at the grocery store. So those are basically my three tips for starting out. And, you know, I have so much more information, but I don't want to overwhelm people <laughs> at this point. Yes, that was great. Our family eats that way already because they don't want the processed food. I'm sure that would be really helpful. And for our final question, what do you want all of your clients, everyone you work with, to know about their bodies? You mentioned that learning to love your body is an important part of the puzzle. So what mindset pieces are crucial here in your opinion? Yeah, this is really, really important. And I do want people to take some time to think about how they feel about their bodies. Because if you have um, a lot of negative, uh, a negative view of your body, it's going to make it really difficult for you to become, you know, for you to reach true wellness. And so it sometimes is something that we don't even know is happening. It's something that is kind of on an unconscious level sometimes when we are having thoughts about our bodies that we don't even realize are happening there. You may discover when you take a moment to become aware, you may discover that you're actually using a lot of negative terminology inside your head about your body. You may be noticing that you say things to yourself like, when I get to a certain size, then I'll be happy. Or um, when I'm when I can figure out these symptoms that I'm having or, or cure them, then I'll be happy. And the thing is, is once you reach that size, once you reach that pant size or that that size on the scale, that weight that you're trying to reach, you will find other things to be unhappy about. Because if you don't love your body now, you're not going to love your body then either. So I really challenge people to take some time to figure out what it is that they, you know, how are you talking to yourself in your head and then take some time. And what I suggest to people is that they, they write a letter to their body. And in this letter, you speak to your body like a good friend would speak. And you, you thank your body for everything it's given you because your body has given you life. Your body has given you the children that you have. It's allowed you to do everything that you've done and everything that you will do. So we do have things to be thankful for. And if you are dealing with trouble losing weight or any of the symptoms that I was talking about before, like skin and digestive issues and cholesterol issues. If you're having those issues, those are messages. And so you can take some time here in this letter to say, thank you for sending me those messages. I will work on figuring out what it is that you want, that, that you are trying to say to me, and I will try and figure out a way to resolve those problems. So that's really the message that I want to get across here is that when we love our bodies, like it's the most important thing, it makes it so much easier to make the decision to choose the better snack, to go on that walk or do that movement that we need, or to take the time and energy and effort to make that meal for ourselves or for our family. Because if you have this negative outlook, it's just, it makes it so much harder to find that motivation and to find the energy to to put in that effort. So I do encourage everybody out there listening to just take some time to, to become aware of your thoughts, write them down, write that letter, and you will have a much easier time reaching true wellness. Great. That was really interesting. So thank you for joining you. us, Lucy. And would you tell our listeners where we can find you and if you have something for them to take action steps on this? Yes. You can find me um, at my website is lucyhutchingsrd.com. And you can go to that website and you will find my free guide, which is your um, the Kickstart Your Health Journey Guide. And in that guide, you're going to find 
um, a health challenge, a five day challenge to kind of kickstart your health journey. You will find my meal planning worksheets. You will find eight ways to cultivate gratitude, which goes into what we were just talking about, about um, finding that love for your body and finding that love for your life. And um, you will just really have um, a good understanding. Oh, and goal setting. So I have several pages in there all about how to set goals that are going to actually work and to avoid those mistakes that so many people make when they're creating their goals that become so unrealistic and, and undoable. So that packet right there is going to give you a big kickstart on your health journey. And so I do highly recommend that's um, lucyhutchingsrd.com forward slash guide. You can also find me on Facebook and I'm quite often live there giving more tips, tricks and hacks and recipe demonstrations and all kinds of um, great information. That's all free, of course. And that's at wellness from within nutrition. That's on Facebook. And then I do have Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram and that's Hutchings dot Lucy. I think that's everything. Awesome. <laughs> all the places. And then we will have the kickstart guide in your site in the show notes so people can find that. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Alyssa. This was great. Bye for now. Have a great Bye -bye. day.